Okay, so uh, I'm not sure how long this video is going to go or what direction it's going to take. I, I spent a lot of time going over a bunch of data, uh, responding to a lot of comments, taking in a lot of information. And what we're going to tackle today is a couple things. I went through, basically, we want to know, is Bungie out of touch with its community? Uh, direction of the game. Is it going to succeed? Is it going to fail? What What's going on? Where's the player base? All these different things. Everybody has different opinions on it. Uh, and so instead of trying to take it an opinion-based approach to it, I decided to go hit the forums right here on Bungie's own forums, the Destiny 2 subreddit. By the way, it's a little toxic in there. So if you go to plan to check this out, feel free to do so. Just be ready. There's a lot of passion in a lot of those posts that lean in many directions. I started hitting all the Destiny 2 content creators, uh, and then I also hit Twitter. So I spent quite a bit of time. It took me a while to go through the comments on. So bear with me. All right. It's going to seem a little energetic, and it might seem a little long-winded. I have a feeling this is going to be a longer video. I'm going to try and keep it short, though. I, I might mean I may have to talk a little fast. But all these references and links will be in links down below. So for reference material, I went to Bungie.net forums. I went to Reddit. I hit Twitch and YouTube, watched various channels, went to their VODs when they were talking about them. And I went to their YouTubes, watched their videos, uh, and read through their comment sections. And these are where a lot of these notes came from and are talking points tried to organize it the best that I could and I'm trying to take it technical first and then opinion based because it's a little hard to separate two of them but but there is technical issues that we can address first I looked at people like CB Grace, Westicle, Glad, Glad still kind of sort of active in Destiny he has some valid points on Destiny 2 I looked at Astacross, I looked at Pigeon, I looked at Flawless, Miss Kenner, Datto, Greener Jake and a few other content creators I tried to cover the spectrum of the content creators that are still very positive towards the game and some are a little more critical of the game. I went to Twitter. I hit the Destiny 2 hashtag. I hit the Bungie hashtag. I watched, went and read through weeks upon weeks of the Bungie, uh, at Bungie, at Bungie, uh, Bungie Help, DMG's Post, Cosmos, and a couple other community, uh, uh, community managers. <clears throat> then I went to statistics. Uh, and I didn't go to just one source for statistics. I went to Destiny Tracker. I went to MMO Population. Uh, Steam charts, tech, uh, tech a cake, uh, MMO stats, and there's about a dozen others, but those are the ones I'm listing here. Um, I can go longer. I'm going to try and get everything listed in the comments below within reason. Okay, so some of the questions as I was reading through all of these comments, and I want to say there was over 10,000 different comments users or players that I, I I took notes from. A lot of them have a lot of the same things to say, so it doesn't look like it, but there were over, I would say, a good rough, roughly 10,000 different uh, player comments uh, that, that I, I read through. So it did take some time. Um, FOMO, I did a short video on, on the FOMO uh, asking about it. Uh, the consensus is there's no real FOMO inside of Destiny 2 with the exception of one or two things. We'll talk about in a minute uh, in the raids portion. Uh, how many of the new players stay around after trying for trying the free to try versus how long term veteran players that spend money are leaving due to changes that cater to the new and casual player? Now, remember, all these are questions that are coming from the comments and everything that I've read. Okay, on the forums, everything. What exactly are we rewarded with for the time that we play? Uh, what is Bungie doing to address performance and stability issues? They have been neg negligent in their responsibilities to paid for content. That was in several areas, by the way. Uh, why is Bungie afraid of PTR public test realms? Is it possible for Bungie to implement dynamic maps to dungeons or lost sectors that are are they are already repurpose they already repurpose lost sectors and strikes in reverse order? for other events like the Halloween events? How does Bungie plan to address or handle accumulated player frustration? Now, this one I found interesting, and I went with that particular wording based on multiple people stating it in different ways. 
Um, some people refer to it as franchise burnout. Some people say it's just burnout. Uh, there are other people that say, I love the game. I've been burnt out in the past, but I've never stopped playing it because I always felt like there was something to do that was new. Uh, but now they're accumulated frustration. And I loved how they said accumulated player frustration. So we're going to try and go through all that stuff. Um, I also went through the TWABs and the community reactions to those TWABs. Uh, the general consensus in the forums, if you go look at it, the TWABs are one-sided. Um, they believe that there's a lack of com the community shifted um, when Bungie decided to come out and say, hey, we're tired of people attacking our comments, our community managers and everything. And the consensus across the board, now you can go to the forums and you can go to the reddits and you can go to the comments, are that because of that lack of communication, Bungie, the, the, the community feels that the Bungie side of the house is essentially saying, hey, we don't want our content, our donor managers or devs or anybody attacked, so we're not going to make any comments, meaning that everybody in the community is bad. You have 1% of the population out there that are being jerks, essentially, and because of that, the rest of us are penalized or lumped into that same nutshell with it. So Bungie needs to do a better idea of respecting its player base, which this whole video is about. Do they respect the community? Are they out of touch with reality? And is it causing detrimental harm to the game? There's a lot of questions that came around all this reading. I can't cover all of them. There was a ton. If you get bored, just go go read sometimes through the forums and stuff. This is oh, it's it's crazy. <clears throat> so I just tried to to pick and choose, not pick and choose, but tried to get the bigger topics and try to group them a little more. <clears throat> so the first area, <clears throat> excuse me as I cough. <clears throat> We're going to go technical and monetization issues, and then we're going to, which I think we can address um, as more of an issue and less of opinion based. And then we'll go more opinion based, okay? So, performance, stability, the frequent number of crashes across all consoles. Now, I have a PlayStation 5, I have an Xbox X, uh, and a PC. So, I've been blessed in that aspect, and I have been able to play all the games on there. And I have done testing on my own, and then I've went to the forums. And I've Googled and I've grepped and I've searched and I find it interesting. The least stable platform is PC. The second least stable is Xbox and the PlayStation for the past year seems to be the most stable. With Sony's acquisition of Bungie, the question that a lot of people are asking, is that stability for the PlayStation 5 because of Sony's purchase of Bungie? There's no commentary on that one. Again, lack of communication from Bungie. This isn't me attacking anybody in general. This is the fact that Bungie has been ex exceptionally quiet and in the dark on anything technically related. They put out a technical twab um, a week ago or beginning of the week or a statement where they gave us the history of what was going on with, um, with uh, let me see, I I'll pull it up here. I think I put it under under my community. Give me a second here. Um, where they said, Boo -doo -doo. I, I like to use my community to engage, by the way. Um, where they did a technical blog thing, right? And they said, <laughs> in, this, <laughs> in this thing, they gave us a history, right? A history here. <clears throat> And a technical blog, remote work and engineering. I don't care about what you guys done in the past. I don't care about remote work. I'm in an enterprise. I do IT and security. I've done it for years. It works. You find solutions. I'm glad they've got stuff out there. I've got, they've got to go ahead. Some stadiums going and people got to go back to the office, but this does nothing to address any technical issues that they're experiencing in the game. All right. So when I come and I'm, I'm talking about their performance and their lack of quality. They don't talk about it at all. And I wish they would. And in their game, in the forums here, when you go into any of the technical ones, when you, when you can find it, they say, open up a case or go here and fill out this link, which doesn't give you anything. And it's relatively meaningless because you're going to submit something and it's going to go into the void. Uh, so again, this greatly leads me to believe that they are extremely out of touch, I'll make this bigger so you guys can see it easier. <clears throat> out of touch with the community and their technical aspects. And then I've got, there was one of the, the more prevailing ones is they tried doing a technical um, blog in the past, 
but it was just met with all this other stuff and it's really too hard. Let me explain how enterprise works. And Bungie is an enterprise, okay? The game is what we consume. We are consumers. And, and if we were the ones over a million, around a million, well, it's down towards 700K now. So they're losing players like right and left for retention. But when you want to interact with them, if the customers aren't happy, the enterprise or the product goes out of business. And this is what's going on. And I don't want to see that happen because we all love Bungie. We all love Destiny 2. It's, it's a love-hate thing. <clears throat> but on their side of the house, what we don't see, <clears throat> there's technical summaries, there's executive summaries, there's tracking what is wrong with the game, what's the server stability issues, do we make the risk assessment to decide we're not going to invest in new servers, why are we investing in new servers, are the old ones versus new, what is Lightfall going to be? There's a whole bunch of stuff that's out there. They don't have to write all this stuff up from scratch. They can get a technical community manager or two, and they can just do the provide the executive summaries that say, hey, yeah, we're aware of this. We have a roadmap to address this. We understand this. We, we can understand address concerns with their game engine. We can identify and provide that to us because in the past they've ignored it. And like during COVID, they came out and they blatantly said, oh, yeah, we forgot to test PC. We neglected the PC component because the play, PC player base was so small. All of a sudden, people thought that there were issues with their actual graphics cards, which was a GPU apocalypse back then kind of is still today but and people were trying to buy and they were buying over stuff because they still wanted to play the game and they couldn't because the thing and it was Bungie clearly neglecting performance <clears throat> so stability with the game was one big big huge comment uh repeated throughout forums reddits everything video comments <clears throat> ranging from the load times when they come into the game <clears throat> when they go to the tower uh why does it once they're in the tower why does it take so long to open up the vault why does it take so long to open up any of the vendors uh why does it take so long just to open up your ghost go to the menu and trying to find a directory to travel around um sharding issues with if um Zur is at the tower having to load into the tower multiple times or relaunch the game just to be able to find Zur. um those kind of issues um still continuously plaguing the game and then inaccurate error codes weasel oh it's a network it's an issue with your network no bungee there's absolutely nothing wrong with my network or other players networks it's an issue with your game acting with interacting with your server side uh, and the code that's causing the problem and you're the ones that tweet out about hey give us we're aware of this we're fixing it that means it's not our issue it's not our network it is your network i know that you're using generic predefined terms or error codes please for the love of it all go through properly identify what the cause is and give it an accurate error message happens enough you can come up with your own errors and name it what it is that's pretty simple because right now you're giving false error codes leading people to think it's on their side when it is on your side and there you have an the demographic that plays this game ranges from teenagers some younger and then to older generation like myself and the generation that's up here with me we're getting really kind of tired of being treated like chumps and for all you naysayers out there well if you don't like it go play something else guess what everybody people are and the statistics are showing that you can come up here to the statistics go look at it we are getting to the lowest player active concurrent player base each season faster and faster and faster because the game has been so simplified or so frustrating and so laden with issues, the players are chunking through the data or the new content and leaving because it's so easy to do. And, and as again, as what the person called it, accumulated player frustration. They're just like, okay, I got to get out of here. And there's no FOMO. There's nothing. I have nothing to fear of missing out. We're going to get to that again here in a second. I'm trying not to go off of squirrel moments, but that's where it's going. Bugs. You came out and you said... It is easier for you and you get more response out of the first day of releasing a game or content into production than their whole entire team could get find it iron. You are leaving us as the player base. You have come out and said, hey, we're going to let them test it for us in a production environment. IT realm, success realm, 
software, Microsoft, Microsoft would do that with their office products. Oh, we're just going to let those guys test it. Opening up bugs, vulnerabilities, exploits, whatever it might be into an enterprise environment, they would be roasted hardcore. You're making us do your work. People are tired of you, Bungie, telling the player base, hey, go do our work for us. Instead of Bungie taking the money that was invested in them from Sony across the board. And I don't care if it's just to the IP of Destiny. And you got other ones. You can develop new technology and new innovations like other game developers are, where they're taking artificial intelligence, AI, and machine learning and investing in the hardware, which is not superly expensive. We already talked about this in a different video. Many others, you can buy AI systems for $70,000 that are super robust. Get six or eight of them, cluster them together. Go get a professional or two that understand how to use the AI software realm to create emulations and simulations and go drop your data in there that you have for all of this stuff. And it's going to cost you a million to a million and a half dollars, maybe two, which is a drop in the bucket, right? For long-term stability for a game or any other future IPs that you create and endeavor into. There is not an issue with that. But you keep saying, oh, no, we're going to let the player base do it. But at the same time, we're going to come back down to here. Where is it at? <clears throat> the question that was that kept coming up, um, why is Bungie afraid of a public test realm? Because you don't want leaks. You want to encrypt everything. You don't want all your super secret sauce to get out there. That's fine. But if you don't want to invest in a public test realm... You better stop making us test because right now what we're doing the, with the way how Destiny 2 is, the consensus is this is a test realm. This isn't a really true bug production environment. It's way too buggy and way too unstable to be classified as a true production environment. But Bungie doesn't want to admit on that one. And people that keep defending it, you go to the forums. You got a couple people out there to really defend one way and really defend the other way. I'm just trying to present it all and I'm trying to keep my opinion out of it. But that part, I'm, I'm letting my opinion strip in because I've been doing IT professionally for freaking 30 years. This is probably one of the worst environments I've ever seen come across or read about. It's pretty bad. Uh, uh, again, we talked about inaccurate error codes and some of the, some of the, just, just the most common ones, like, um, doing uh, PVE events and the champions just, you're shooting it, it's right there in front of you and all of a sudden he's five feet away behind you and there's not a teleporting champion, but he teleported anyways. The random crashes that prevent uh, flawless solo victories or if you're running with the crew, flawless runs, all these things, you're, you crash, just burn whole nine yards. There's a problem. Uh, we, we, we left the anti-cheat out of it because that's a hugely debated topic with how invasive battle eye is and how much it impacts performance. Their new implementation, according to the last TWAB, how they're going to start looking more and more at network traffic and behaviors. They are now, ex they, they, the, the battle eye, the anti-cheat on the PC now goes outside of that, leading to intercepts on all your network traffic coming from your to and from your PC it's pretty intrusive and it causes performance issues. It causes latency and it's on Bungie because they're again testing on us instead of doing a test, proper test in a testing environment. It's, it comes onto that. <clears throat> the next area was really out there was monetization is confusing for a lot of the players. It's a free to try model, although Bungie keeps calling it free to play. It is not freaking free to play. My kid has played it. And when certain things go away, certain abilities can't work. He doesn't have access to the stasis unless I go pay for things. So you tease Bungie teases with the play free to term free to play. It's free to try. OK, the, the, the other part of it for people that do play the game, that do have the unlocks and the downloadable content and the DLCs and everything that have paid for all of that. There, the confusion is like, I, I've paid for this, then I have to pay for a season pass, then I have to pay for access to the dungeons, and then there's the Eververse store, and I have to pay for all this stuff that they consider as being overpriced. And Bungie's like, well, you got, it's just transmog, it's just, it's just graphics, and again, go hit the forums if you don't want to believe me on this one. And they're talking about it being overpriced, and people are like, well, it's just transmog. If it was a free, totally free game, Fortnite, look at Fortnite, if it was totally free, or Apex Legends, you can just go play the games, right? Even Overwatch, which is Overwatch 2, which is free to play, you can go out there and you can buy these packs, right? But you're not paying for any of the game. You're not paying for any of the ability locks. You're not paying to access any of the exclusive raids or, or dungeons or anything like that. So they are able to charge 
for that, that those kind of transmogs and those kind of weapon packs and everything else like that. Bungie's charging the crap out of everything. They're, the only thing that's missing is a monthly subscription, which I wouldn't doubt if we see that in the future. Okay? So Arrowverse is being considered extremely overpriced, and that, that comes into the transmog section of it, where the thousands of dollars you would literally have to spend to try and get yourself all the transmog, which is quarterly free and you could work through it. But again, the forum, Swesticles did a video on it. Um, other content creators have done a video on it. I can't remember which ones. Let me see if he's on my list. I know Astrocross talked about it. Um, oh, Datto, I think, touched on it. There was a few that touched all on the transmog thing and how long it takes to unlock everything. And we're talking a year and a half, two years. And if you're a casual player, it's way longer than that. It's just... They have monetized so much and are so out of touch with the reality of what the players are willing to spend. Uh, and it's called nickel and diamond, and they've already now got the backing of Bungie. Something has to happen with that. So they need to fix that aspect of the game. And all this is coming back to, is, is Bungie out of touch with their community? And yes, they are. They would take the time to go read the forums, the comments, all the videos and stuff. Yes. And I want everybody to understand something too. One thing I've found out there, a lot of people think that 1% of the YouTube and the content creator content uh, creators drive and dictate what Bungie's going to do. That's so not, that's so out of truth. Not true. I've seen so many videos while I was doing this research and so many comments from bigger content creators of things that Bungie needs to do and they haven't done. So I, I say Bungie might take note of it, from 1% or 2%, but they're not acting on it. They're doing their own marching orders, which I think, again, is why we see more and more um, drawn out. Another big one was they introduced stories like Savathun or the Dreaming City, and they're like, oh, this is great, and they tell a really great story, and then they just pan away and go do something else, like they got squirreled, and then there's nothing to do. Uh, they And they might return to it a, a year from now or two years from now. It, it really... So Dreaming City... We had all this stuff going on. We thought we might have the curse broken or something, the Savathun and everything. And no, nope, that didn't happen. And then all of a sudden, people are like, oh, we're going to do next. We're going to maybe <clears throat> have an answer to it. No, we have light fall and we're going to a different planet. <clears throat> What's that do for Dreaming City? I don't know. Content. So uh, these these are topics um, that were heavy in the forums that were a reason why people were starting to leave Bungie. Or we're very critical of them. The repetition, the seat like repetition, triumphs, titles, and emblems versus gears, reward for time play, uh, time gating, and weekly lockouts, uh, forcing people to come back every week. I kind of get the story lockouts timeline thing, but uh, old content being used as new content, vaulting of paid content, season content repetition. Um, one thing that's needed, this, is a, this came up multiple times, one thing is needed, less of the same. It's the same formula every season. You know you're going to have a reset. We're going to have the artifact. We're going to have to go do some sort of table, and the table changes, the currency changes, how you get stuff to unlock, the weekly crap on those tables, and everything else. It's all going to change, but it's still going to be the same, and then that meta is going to be driven by Bungie. They're going to dictate to us what weapons are going to be good that season and what weapons aren't good that season. Uh, so the repetition is already known. We already know pretty much every season what's going to have to happen. And it's a little bit old for people. Uh, I don't do much with PVP, but when they brought out <clears throat> the TWAB last week or this week about um, Crucible primarily, and there were a lot of videos that popped up on it, a lot of people aren't happy with the limited maps. They're not happy with uh, some of the changes. They, they like some of the proposed changes if it comes true. Um they want to know. A lot of people keep saying, why don't we have something like uh, uh, Halo's uh, map forges where people in the content in the community can create maps and, and, and types of interactions and types of PvP events? Why is that something that's not plausible? Uh, Bungie has never come out and made a statement on that one. If it's maybe something that Halo or Microsoft retain rights to, uh, it can be genericized now. They can, they, 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 it's, it's pretty easy to build all that stuff. It's not new technology. It's been around for years. So, uh, PVP can, and, and people in the PVP realm want to know where's our, you know, where's our actual competition, um, things like that. Uh, bring back secret missions was huge. Uh, and Bungie came out and said it's too expensive. They didn't say if it was monetary or if it was a resource issue. Uh, the person in me that understands how encryption works calls a little bit of BS. 
Um, with the Lightfall, if they're building that Lightfall and everything on a new engine, they can incorporate all that and build those secrets into it relatively easy and not worry about old realms. Uh, but again, hey, what do I know? Uh, I'm just I'm just here. People again are really asking for secret missions. Uh, power creep is huge. Are we leveling up our light? Are we leveling up our weapons? Are we leveling up our armor? And not really doing anything. You get to 1580 and all of a sudden you have this huge drop. And if you get resilience or your gear stats this way, problem solved, you can go do it. You actually won't even really need to get to hundreds and all that stuff anymore. You can still go in and do everything fairly easy because the challenges people are said, there's no challenges for the end game players. It's been simplified for the free to try the free to play the casual, the new light. Um, that just wants to go do things uh and you have those that want to solo play and they're complaining that they have to get something uh and so this this challenge for the end game has has gone away and people are like well you trying to you're trying to gate the game you're trying to end game gate the the game to you people that are saying end game gate the game no i just don't believe in participation trophies you want to go get something i'm gonna raid go find a raid team learn how to raid Take those times in there. There's plenty of people out there with matchmaking and plenty of people in Discord and streamers out there to do the carries. They can teach you, they can walk you through, and they can help you out. I do it all the time with, with Vegeta Plays and CB and all these other people where we go out and we help, but it has become such an overburn where it's expected instead of requested that it's it's just but you don't really need them, especially with crafted weapons out there. I can go farm up a bunch of crafted weapons. And people are like, I had a discussion, uh, somebody said, well, y'all, you people farming, complain about red border farming. This is laughable. Yeah, yeah, I get it, I get it, I get it. You think it's laughable, but the problem is I can go craft the weapons that I need, put the enhanced perk on them. I don't have to take the time to try and go pray that I get an RNG God roll, right? When I can go specify pretty close to it. Sure, it's not an adept weapon, maybe from the Grandmasters, which I can get easy enough because it, it, we can get Knockout Conqueror inside of three hours now every season when it comes out. And then I can go double farm and everything else to get certain ones. But <clears throat> the game isn't hard. It doesn't have the, the, the hard enough content to where I have to worry about what weapons I'm going to use. I, it really doesn't. I have a dozen different weapons I can load out to. It doesn't have to be exotic either replayable content people want new content and they don't mind if it's replayable content but they don't want it to be a forced grind content where it's over over overkill like you look at the ruffians from uh the swashbuckler event they had to drop it from 50 to 10 because they had poor design and how the mechanic worked if you had three people on the team they were hoping the people would understand that you need to draw the each encounter out long enough for the ruffian to spawn but no they didn't want to do that so they just made it 50 thinking oh they're going to play the whole season no people don't want to do hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of catch caches or expeditions the, you know casual players and you know end gamers and grinders might be okay with that but the casual player they don't have that kind of time they got a couple hours a week to log into the game to play it and trying to farm out that much isn't going to happen trying to catch up because destiny's been out for a long time there is a ton of content if you're new to the game there is a crap ton of content but you don't have that kind of time if you're new or if you're casual semi-casual you don't have that kind of time so they're out of touch with reality and how much they're requiring triumphs this is Two or three seasons in a row now where they've had to go back, look at the triumphs, and adjust them and cut things down dramatically on the number of requirements, either the number of gambit runs, the number of ruffian kills, the number of farmable items. I could go on, and so do the forums, about what the what that grind is and if it's out of touch with reality or not. <clears throat> Again, then there's people that are that are casual. A lot of the casual players, this is this one here was really this one was prominent across the board. Quests requiring participation in Gambit or PvP. People doing two-thirds of your player base, you can go look at the statistics, right? Which I provided above as reference links. Go look at the statistics. You are going to find out that your casual player base, two-thirds or better, are PvP or PvE only. They don't want anything. They don't really want to do Gambit. They don't want to really do PvE, PvP. They just want to play PvP. But when you have quests, exotic quests or seasonal quests that constantly require to get this item to go in. Oh, if you want to get that catalyst, you want to get that, that, that exotic rifle, you want to get this, you're going to go have to go grind the hell out of PvP. You're going to have to go into, into Gambit and you're going to have to reset your rank twice. You're forcing players that do not have any desire to play those tape, those game modes to do it. Now, I'm not saying 
give them the exotic for free or give them the quest for free, give them an alternate. And you did that in the past. Bungie has done that in the past and a couple of other exotics where they say, either go in and do this inside of PvP or go do this in PvE. Like get X number of kills or something inside of PvP or you can go do Nightfalls, Master Nightfalls. That's fine. Or go do this. Give them the choice of what aspect they want to do and how grindy you want to make it per act to each, each, each alternative. That's perfectly fine. They want choice. And you took that away. Uh, and you're forcing people to go do activities. And that's where a lot of frustration is coming from. I could not believe the number of comments I saw about people frustrated specifically about that. Uh, and then the, the other comment is, what is the purpose of the vendors on the tower? Uh, Zavala serves no purpose. Ikora, you could do that some way. You know what? You're making us do all this stuff. Those are abilities. Those are things that we should do. Those should automatically unlock. Uh, that's the consensus. Instead, you're making us vi the players visit. Now, I'm trying to, trying to separate opinion in here. I'm, I've got a lot of the consensus from the forums and stuff that I've read. Go to that. Go to Ikora to unlock something that should automatically unlock. Why? Because you're trying to empty out the player's glimmer. Fifty thousand at a whack. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, mods. Uh, mods should just automatic. Everyone should just have the mods. Uh, and you're, you're rotating them through. You're trying to make it sure. So you got a casual player. You might play one week, miss another week, and then they don't have those rotations. And the mods are less and more. All these other things. So why not just unlock the mods for everybody as they unplay? Uh, or you implement a way if they level these kind of weapons, it unlocks those mods for the weapons. The more they use a specific weapon type, the more it unlocks all the mods. There are different means to different things, but the general consensus is if you just want just, just unlock the mods for all the players, okay? You're already having them do the seasonal artifact is what people, a lot of the, the players are saying, hey, we're already having the un unlock the artifact, we're playing, we're doing it in this. That should be enough to unlock any of the specialty mods. Everything else should just automatically be unlocked. I kind of agree with it. So Ikora doesn't serve any purpose. Hawthorne giving the the the, the raid the, the clan bounties and stuff. I'm okay with her. She serves a purpose. She actually gives pinnacle gear. Perfectly okay with that. Uh, but like Savala and Banshee, um, eight to one. The gear they offer is under light and typically low stats. <clears throat> so what's their purpose? They have no purpose. They don't give anything other than occasional quest story. So people are like, what is their purpose? Um. Most of the people use the app, which they disagree with having to use to go pick up all the bounties for the week or the daily reset bounties or anything. They do that from orbit because loading into the tower is a horribly bad experience and it takes a long time. So they might do that. They might go to the helm to access their postmaster, to access their, their vault. Uh, they want better vault management things. Um, <clears throat> I could keep going on, go read the forms. It's crazy on how that works. Um, so vendors, what purpose do vendors send? Uh, issues with raids and dungeons and grandmasters. Okay, first four weeks. Okay, this is one. This is where the only FOMO that I could find that people were talking about is still existing. Fear of missing out is after with how the raids are currently and how the game is designed uh, for more more or less new light and casual players. After the first four weeks, all the diehard players have done the raids. They've gotten all the gear they want. They farmed up everything that they need um, with the exception of maybe one or two red boxes. So they might pop in or two for that, but they're all they're doing is that. So when you try to come back as a casual player or if you've been somebody that's on vacation or gone somewhere or anything, or you just want to just, you know, casually play the game and maybe once or twice a month, get in and play on the weekends, um, trying to find a raid group that's actively doing it, that's, that's that knows what they're doing or is worth it, it's a little more difficult. But it's still doable, but it's it's just going to be a lower, lower probability. Now, with matchmaking coming, that might change things up. With them adding that matchmaking, fine. Uh, the, but again, people are like, I have crafted weapons. What is the purpose of me going into the raid to begin with? Because they don't really care. For, I'm, I'm agreeing with them. I don't really care for the triumph. I don't care for the emblem. I'm there for the gear. What makes me a better player and everything? The mechanic, is it fun? Uh, am I enjoying it with my team? What's my benefit of the armor? Armor doesn't serve me any purpose out of there. I don't really use any of the armor from the raids. I just find a stat armor I like and, and drop it because, yeah. Um, exotic drop rate is horribly bad. Um, I have one person, and apparently if you go check the forums, there's tons of people like this. 
Uh, the forgiveness rate is horrible. Uh, Vex Mythic Glass, tons of players, done hundreds of runs, still don't have Vex. Uh, I've done weekly runs with with CB Gray and, and Scuda and a few others. They still don't have um, a Touch of Malice. So you get, and then when I was doing um, Eyes of Tomorrow, Deep Stone Crypt, it took me almost 100 runs or better. Um, running uh, Vow of Disciple, uh, my team that I was running with, they were farming every week and they got to the point where like, Hey, this is our last week of farming. If you don't get it, then, you know, uh, I don't know what you're going to do. You're going to do LFGs or find a group. I barely got the exotic pulse rifle out of there. So their drop rates for their exotic gear, there's no forgiveness for it. It, it gets really bad. People in the forums are really tired of it. Um, so you've got that one. They've been simplified and considered, they're not considered hard. There's really GMs. Uh, you have more and more players now. It used to be like Esoteric and a handful of others. They would go solo the Grandmasters. It would take them a long time and they would put out the strats and some people would attempt it. But now, now it's just more and more players are just going in and solo because it's been so simplified. It's easy to do that. And I'm part of my dogs. So, all right. So let, let's talk about the RNG grind portion of it, um, meaning. Uh, how long is it going to take me to farm up the the quote unquote PVE god roll of a weapon, or the PVE PVP god roll of a weapon, or certain armor types with attributes on them? How am I going to get that armor? How long is it going to take me? Am I have to go run the dungeons? Typically, a lot of people like to go in and do pit of heresy because you can get pretty much pretty decent armor again, and it's not it's not raid specific armor. It's just all around purpose armor, and that's what a lot of players are trying to do. So the RNG grind. I'm perfectly okay with trying to grind out those builds, but again, a lot of that's cut in half with your craftable weapons, and if Bungie introduces craftable armor, mm, people are just going to go craft a certain set or another set and go into there. Uh, but that also talks about the fact that people want the ability to say, hey, look, can you give us um, vault management or gear loadout management? Give us the ability to save, hey, I'm going to go do a Grandmaster. I would like this loadout. I want this armor with these mods on it. I'm going to go do a strike. I want a different loadout. Same armor. I want to change the mods. Maybe do these weapons. I just want to preload out to it. I'm going to go do this raid, right? Uh, and doing this encounter. So throughout like uh, King's Fall, sometimes you're using linear fusions. Sometimes you might be the div person. Uh, sometimes you're, you're going to be using swords. It really depends. And you just want to be able to go hit and do a loadout instead of being able to do it in game and have that, which a lot of other games do. You have to go do something like um, Destiny Item Manager. Dim, you can do your loadouts there and you can change all that stuff. So why can't Destiny do that? A lot of people are asking for this quality of life improvement. Um, they're tired of exotic missions versus lost sectors because of the RNG. Oh, look, you want this exotic chest piece? You're going to have to go run it while it's, uh, the lost sector for the week and hope that that chest piece that drops, you got 20 chest pieces in the game for your character Clive for a Titan. And you're hoping to get the exotic chest piece. If you have got them all unlocked, you're hoping to get that chest piece and you're hoping to get it with the stats that you're after. It's very difficult to go do, but it's farmable, which is not a bad thing. It's just a, a, a lot of people are just like, screw it. I'm just going to get it. I'll try a couple times and there I go. Um, exotic missions. Let us have more exotic missions. Give us secret missions. That's a lot of people are asking for. They're also tired of gear nerfs. Um, and this one was specific, and this was really interesting from the forums to follow through and read about where they talked about um, a couple different aspects of gear nerfs. They understand things come out too powerful. They understand sometimes that it breaks a game or has a lusto, you know, kind of a thing. But when it's an item that is paid for in content and is marketed as an item in that paid content as doing X, Y, Z, and then all of a sudden Z is taken away after a while, that breaks while you purchased it and becomes where's the intellectual property purchase rights come from. Now, Bungie uh, changes the TOS and their EULA all the time, terms of service and user license agreement. They change it whenever they want. We don't have any say in the matter. That's for a whole different video. A lot of game developers do. There's no real consumer rights in that aspect. You want to play it, you're going to have to accept it. And that's just a really bad model because it's one-sided. Uh, so that came up a whole lot. Um, transmog, they're tired of it. 
people think that the Destiny has one of the worst transmog systems in the world because of the pricing and the time delays and the lockouts and how much it could cost in thousands, all this other stuff. Just unlock transmog. Let us let us have all the transmogs. Take that crap, that mechanic, mechanic out of there. You no longer have to have that maintain that transmog forge. Oh, it's cute. It's simple, but you don't have to maintain that resource in the game. You can take that burden out of the tower. You can take that burden as a mechanic out of the system. Just unlock transmog, and all of a sudden, everyone's happy. They can look however they want to. If they've got the drop, um, they've got the transmog. If they've taken the time to farm it and they've had the drop, give them the transmog. It's It's pretty simple. A lot of other games do it that way. I don't understand why Bungie doesn't do that way. And that's a lot of player base does not understand that one. Again, I am quoting from Bungie's for own forums, from the Destiny 2 subreddit, and from Twitter. These are where all my comments are trying to come from. A lot of them sound opinion-based, but that's how a lot of the players are from coming from, okay? I've switched to, after getting out of the technical aspects, coming down here. This is a lot of opinion stuff. Again, we already talked about the mods. We already talked about sort of how Bungie dictates each seasonal um, meta. People are tired of having to do what Bungie says. Hey, look, this season you're going to use this weapon for, for, for overload. You're going to use this weapon for um, barrier. You're going to use this one for this and this and that. And um, you might make it on a sidearm and people hate playing with sidearms. You might put it on a bow and people don't like using the bow. Some people do. Some people don't. It might sound like I'm complaining, but this is people. These are players out there. Again, I, I, I believe I hit well over 10,000 different players in the multiple researches that I've done on this. I have spent a long time putting this reference together. Let them play how they want to play. Let them specify what weapons they want to put on. Put the, the barrier on. Give them a couple options so you're not forcing a generic play style. Okay? Um, it, it really, people just get tired of it. Again, we already talked about mods. We've already talked about weapon crafting. Um, there's so much more out there. Again, this video is long now. It's probably close to be 40 minutes by the time I get it all posted. But, you know, go out to the forums. Read read through it. They're, they're, they talk about... Uh, broken quests. They talk about bugs. They talk about HUD options. They talk about quality of life improvements. They talk about sweats uh, inside a PVP. They talk about, um, you know, just just you can click through so much of this stuff. Support stability issues. Clans that are recording. Oh, let's not even talk about the clans. So many of the people are out there. Why are we limited to 100 players in a clan? Why can't it be 250 or 500? That's a whole different ball of wax. You can go to the Destiny Reddit. Uh, they can talk about the sessions and, and, and why, isn't this, why isn't there better testing? Why is there optimization issues? Why is all these things? Just be prepared. It can get toxic. Go hit YouTube. There's a lot of videos out there. Um, this is being removed. This is doing this. Destiny worth playing in 2022. All these people putting this out there. Will a tort? And sweats is great. I love sweats. Uh, I, you tell a lot of these content creators, though, a whole different video. How many of them are now branching out instead of just doing Destiny 2 are starting to play other games for content on their streams and broaden their horizon, becoming a variety gamer instead of a single Destiny 2 streamer. It's really interesting to see how that goes. Um, Twitter, go hit that stuff. Be prepared. I will put all of these links right here that I used as references for this video. And I'm sorry again that it hit 40 minutes. I'm pretty sure it's going to hit 40 minutes. I wanted to go faster, but the, and that, there's no way for me to break a video up into something smaller. Be prepared. It's a long one. But I welcome your thoughts on this one, just like all the other videos. Is Bungie out of touch with its community? Is because of that lack of communication that they have lumped us in with other bad people talking instead of giving us that inter interaction like they used to, causing these problems? Do they just not care anymore? Are they just in it for the money? Yeah, they're here to make money and everything else, but are they going to leave a legacy or are they going to ruin the IP and drag it down as by the time people go down there, it's going to be a game that used to be great and people would say, oh, it used to be good. It used to be great. I remember when instead of a game that people want to log into every day or log into a few times a week. Um, let me know. Right now, uh, the competition out there, yeah, there's no true competition out there for Destiny 2. 
But I'm going to tell you this, there's plenty of other games that are coming out that are going to take away from the active player base. And that player base is going to continue to get smaller and smaller and smaller as other players and like myself are finding games to go do that will hold our own. We have Starfield coming out. If it comes true and delivers what it is, that's going to be a huge time sink for players. And it'll take them away from Destiny 2 even more. You've got Hogwarts Legacy. That's going to draw people away because that's going to be a long, long gameplay. Hundreds of hours on that one potentially. Gods of War. Uh, Ragnarok. We've already seen people playing on that one. People are like, oh, they're just down because all these games are out. God of War Ragnarok is a blast. But if you got a game like that that's coming out and it's got a new game plus feature and it's pulling people away, you're going to have that one. Modern Warfare 2, it's PvP. Valorant's PvP. Apex Legends PP, PvP. Fortnite's PvP. All those ones have some sort of reward to them that is meaningful and not, hey, look, you're going to get an emblem and a title. We don't care about that stuff anymore. And it's apparent with the majority of the community. They don't care about titles. They don't care about a triumph or an emblem. They want a reward for their time played. And if it's competition PvP, give them a freaking ranking. They want that ranking. They want to chase that. You know, that gives them a reason to be a sweat or something. This is what where the community is at. And I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that more and more people haven't done it. I know Destiny Bungie has got to have people that are going out and looking at this and they're just not talking about it. Instead, they're letting people speculate. They're letting the communities duke it out on both sides of the stick and just have fights and you get told you're toxic one way or another. And for myself and I, I know I'm going to get hate on this video. I know I'm going to get some comments that are positive on this video. Let me know down below what you think. Do you agree with the communities, the, the current standings of the community where they think that, that Bungie is actually out of touch with reality and Bungie is doing a bad job of managing the game? That's the bulk of the consensus. They're not list, actually listening to the feedback that they're getting. They have they have their, their eyes on, they're trying to do this, and you can't say it's because they don't have funding. They got plenty of funding. Let me know in the comments below. If you like this, please hit the subscribe button. It means the world to me. Um, you guys are awesome and gals. Everyone's cool. Uh, I will see you either in stream or I will see you in game no matter what I'm playing. If you got questions, comments below. Hit me up on Twitter. Hit me up on Discord. Hit me up wherever I'm at. It's GMD Geek basically everywhere. You guys are awesome. And again, stay safe out there and I will see you around.